Welcome to the Metropolitan Water District's H2O Talk, a chat about Southern California water issues. I'm Tom Philp. I'm here with our general manager, Jeff Keitlinger, talking about water issues of the day. And today's issue is balance. Uh, the Southern California water system this year is in balance, meaning we are not planning to either add or withdraw water from our reserve system. And this is a somewhat remarkable feat for Metropolitan because we are getting a very modest supply from the north this year. And this is the smallest supply that we have ever had from the north that has not triggered a withdrawal of water in our reserves. So this is a quiet piece of good news that's happening in Southern California right now. But uh, Jeff, first, Walk us through our storage uh, network and we uh, our two buckets of water that we uh, keep in, in reserve for, for Southern California. Sure. Thanks, Tom. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about California and Southern California's water supply. California is incredibly volatile. It, it's – you just – we really never know exactly what we're going to have. It's so rare to have a normal year. Some years we have incredible amounts of water, huge peak floods, and then we go very dry for a few years. And the way we the way we try to smooth that out and balance it so that it works, uh, so that we always have water available for consumers, is storage. We have reservoirs, we have groundwater banks, and we put water in them. And so Metropolitan thinks of that storage in two different ways. One is we always want to have an emergency supply in Southern California at all times if an earthquake should cut off our access to our main sources of water that come from outside of Southern California. And we balance, we base that on uh, a population calculation and what the demands would be to serve that, uh, that population base over a six-month period of time, uh, given uh, heavy rationing, because we, after a major huge earthquake, we would be in major rationing mode. And for six-month supply, uh, that's 600,000 acre feet that we always keep in Southern California at all times. And we don't try to touch that under any circumstances other than that some sort of major natural catastrophe. Then on top of that, we bank water to help us through our normal hydrological cycle, those wet years and dry years. So in the wet years, we bank that water, and in the dry years, we draw it down. And right now, we have a total of 2.5 million acre feet of storage uh, that we can move and, and use uh, as we need to. And that's um, on top, that's in conjunction with that earthquake storage. So we have 600,000 there. And so we have basically not quite 2 million, 1.9 million acre feet of water that we can touch and access at any given point in time to mitigate us through uh, the dry years. How does that amount of water, 2.5 million acre feet and combined reserves, compare with the past? Is this pretty close to kind of our, uh, uh, our our peak amount of water we've had in reserve? We're pretty close to it. Uh, in, the, in the late 2000s, we got close to almost 3 million acre feet. And then, you know, if anyone's been living in Southern California this last uh, decade, uh, we've had seven, eight drought years over this period of time. So the fact that we've managed to sock away two and a half million acre feet going through a pretty dry decade is pretty remarkable. Uh, the way we managed to do that is we had this huge year in 2017, one of the wettest years California's ever seen just a year ago. And in that year, we moved more water into storage than we ever had in the whole history of Metropolitan in a single year. And, and that's the way we're going to have to be. Uh, we're going to have to be very nimble and agile as California – We've always been volatile weather-wise. You know, anyone, you know, you always know we, we live in these cycles of drought and mudslides and flood and all these types of, uh, you know, d just difficult weather conditions here in California. And it's going to get even more so. Uh, the, the last five years has been a remarkable aspect of that. It's shown us that climate change is real and, and it's impacting us and making our water supply even more volatile than we've ever seen. So let's uh, go through the numbers of our, our balanced year. Uh, we have our supply from the North State Water Project and our Colorado River supply. And then we have what we project to be our demand uh, uh, for, for the year. What's our uh, allocation, our expectation of water from, from the North this year? So we get, we're getting a roughly about 700,000 acre feet from the North. And that what that uh, equates to the way they do it is called an allocation. That's a 35% allocation. Uh, each each uh, percentage point, you know, is worth about two acre feet. So a 35% equals 700,000 acre 
feet. And that's um, pretty low. Historically, our demand in Southern California was close to 2 million acre feet a year. So it usually took us, we needed to get a million acre feet from the Colorado and we needed to get a million acre feet from Northern California to balance, uh, which is a 50% year. And so it usually took a 50% year of state water project water for us to balance. And this year we're balancing on a 35% year. And what are we expecting from the Colorado system this year? Pretty close to that million. We're going to get about a little over 900,000, about 940,000 acre feet or so, give or take. And so relatively close to that million acre foot target. But uh, it's really been a story of conservation. Yeah, so we're expecting a demand uh, this year between 1.6, 1.7 million acre feet. How does that compare to history, when our, what our peak demand was? And how long ago was our peak demand? Yeah, our, our peak demand uh, was in 1990. And we only had 14 million people here in Southern California. And Metropolitan sold almost 2.5 million acre feet. That's been our high water mark our high water year for sales, 2.4, 2.5 million acre feet. And now it takes 1.6, 1.65 million acre feet to balance demands. And we've grown from 14 million to 19 million people. So it's a remarkable story of essentially 25 years of concentrated investment in drawing down demand, conservation, the efficiency toilets, the showers, uh, all, all the, the washing machines, all the, the devices in your house, getting people to transform their landscape in their gardens. It's really turned Southern California into good stewards of water and driven down our demand to the point where we can balance with a lot less imported water. So this is a good piece of news, but it doesn't mean that necessarily we're out of the woods. We still have some more investing to do to maintain these supplies from both Northern California and the Colorado River. Yes, we We've gone from need, needing somewhere anywhere between two-thirds and three-fourths of all of Southern California's water being imported down to closer to 50 percent. Uh, that's a great success story, but that's still a, a very large amount of water. 50 percent of or so that we need of all our water uh, has to come from a long ways away. We're talking 250 miles to the east of the Colorado River, uh, 350, 400 miles to the north from the Sierras. That's water that we have to move a long way and have to be very mindful of that it's a valuable resource that we've gone to a lot of effort to take from far away and move it to here for us to use. And for a future investment such as California Water Fix, an, uh, an upgrade, a modernization of our statewide delivery system, this is a signal that we're really looking to stabilize that supply. We're, we, can do, we can be in balance long term if we have a stable supply coming from the north. Yeah, it's been very important for us to stabilize our imported supplies. So we've invested in the Colorado River. We've invested in conservation programs, invested in endangered species programs there. And we're doing the same in Northern California. That's really what California Water Fix is, modernizing that state water project system so that it can continue to be as reliable as possible, uh, given all the impacts of climate change and all the other stresses that we see coming on to California. Well, Jeff, Thanks a lot for walking us through the numbers. Good talking with you, Tom. <laughs>